Hello, ladies and gents, boys and girls, whatever you like to call yourselves. Hey, because I'm officially thirsty and I can't think of any video ideas, I will be going over this website known as Screen Rant and talk about this little list that they have made by Chris Len Loden. I don't know if he spelled his name right or wrong. <coughs> and it's called. 20 things wrong with Dragon Ball we all choose to ignore. Now, do they have anything good or bad? I don't know. People just keep on telling me it's really a garbage, and I want to get on this action. <coughs> when it comes to Dragon Ball, there are certainly a lot to remember. It's a show that's spanned over the last 10 years, yada yada yada. Something about, you know, all that history throughout the Dragon Ball. Well, such history comes from like higher likelihood of errors. I hope you're kidding. Okay, starting off with number 20, we have, it's over 8,000. Uh, I was the to do extremely much to myself. Is it 8,000 or 9,000? I just want to find that decision. Sir, or whoever made this, um, this decision was made over a decade ago. And they talked about how that was just an error in... So I shouldn't have to explain to myself, this is common sense. Oh, this was so, oh, this was so more than a decade ago. I don't have to explain myself for this. Nobody thinks that it's still over 9,000 except people who don't watch Dragon Ball. That's just plain and simple and common knowledge. Number 19 is Master Roshi's questionable behavior. <sighs> he may be widely respected warrior, but he's certainly not an angel. Yeah, no kidding. Despite his look of an aging fire, Roshi has shared awkward and uncomfortable moments. The, ent the entertainment world has been on notice over the past few years for harassment, so Master Roshi would not be a widely embraced character in his climate. So basically what they're trying to do here is say that Master Roshi is somehow forgotten, which is not true at all. In fact, the last time we saw him was actually doing something useful, and that was taking on Freeze's army in Resurrection F. So it was he forgotten, and his questionable behavior has not gone unnoticed. So um, you can you can, you can stop. From all the past moments of dirty reading that he's in public, he is the definition of a dirty old man. Ah, screaming, screaming. Say he has an oxygen. I don't even have to explain myself, do I? Okay, for all you people who have an IQ of like three, let me explain this. <coughs> so let me just let me just hear what's going on today. Super Saiyan is one of the most powerful beings in the universe, at least for a little bit. However, they need oxygen to obey the laws of physiology. Physiology. Okay, then I guess we went just for who Barnock is and how the fight between God, Goku, and Beerus went. They were up there for, I'm pretty sure, more than ten minutes. Probably half an hour. I don't know about you, but I don't think people can breathe in space for half an hour. And Bardock just beat up with most of the freedom's henchmen. It always got to him. And, uh, yeah, I don't know about you, but that was not, there was no oxygen up there in space. So, you can please stop screaming at and be approved. Fans will accept fantastical elements, but they need to clearly be defined in order to enjoy the show. The hyperbolic time chamber. No one has forgotten the hyperbolic time chamber or what does. I'm pretty sure by now everyone knows that the hyperbolic time chamber is used to train what seems like for a year, but an actual day in a hyperbolic time chamber. No one has forgot this. Television shows often surfer when they're Actors age too quickly in the real world. This means that they do not keep up with their ages and portray on the show. That is incorrect. I have to um, incorrect. I have to correct you, sir. Right there. So, what I have to say about that is, um, where are you even getting all this from? Like, where are you actually getting this from? That they're aging too quickly, sir. The characters are not aging too quickly. Mm. For a man, I don't know. He doesn't 
matter that much. I'm still going to talk about you. Anyway, let's see what they have to say. The Spike being animated Dragon Ball has created a, a similar issue of itself about characters aging too quickly. Um, a characters are not aged too quickly. In fact, some characters have aged very slowly, slower than we actually need it to. Like in original Dragon Ball, when Goku was 15, it looked like he was 15, but he was a child. I know it's probably has nothing to do with the actual story, but hey, I don't care really. In order to have some of their younger characters grow up to be faster in the original battle, the Hyperball Attack Chimp was introduced. No, they were not used to become younger. They were used so that the characters can be stronger in a short amount of time for a plot device. That's what even that's even what Toriyama said himself. So I don't have to say that. How did Poco find the Dragon Ball so quickly? You know what? I'm gonna actually give him a chance this time. Mr. Poco certainly sticks out like a sore thumb. Particularly when standing next to hulking characters like Goku and Piccolo, his short and plump stature makes him weak with some look weak character. However, Poco is actually one of the strongest people in the entire Dragon Ball series. Should I be able to find the Dragon Ball's faster than anybody else? Hey, um, Shmina, ever heard of, uh, this cool thing called, uh, Plot? During his search for the Dragon Balls, while the rest of the group fights for Frieza, Popo was able to find them seemingly in a matter of minutes. I don't know what Plot is. While his magic carpet can travel through planets in a few minutes, a few moments, how does Popo exactly know where the Dragon Balls were hidden? Oh, I don't know. Probably because he um, lives with Kami, so wouldn't he know that? He lives with the god of Dragon Balls. You think he'd know, right? Right? Fans were expecting to just accept Popo's quick work instead of questioning the logic. But yeah, kind of like the big leap of logic like you. The inconsistent Dragon Ball rules. Let's do what you have to say about yourself. When there are all powerful ores which can which can grant grant any measure of wishes, there are needs to be there needs to be rules involved. However, it seems that these rules were made to be broken. When initially introduced, Dragon Balls had a specific set of rules that only one wish would be granted after the Dragon Balls were gathered. So the Dragon Balls would be stalled for a year after a wish was granted, but no one could be revived twice by the spell. Yeah. However, as the show progressed, these rules change for storyline purposes. These days, three wishes are granted because of Dende. The Dragon Balls are no longer turned to stone, and people could be revived multiple times. Yet again, um, Screenware, you ever heard of this cool thing called, um, Plot? Each rule has been adjusted to fit the story of needs. So why do they exist in the first place? Did you just basically exist while the show exists? How does the afterlife work? You know what, I'm, I'm stuck to think that these people haven't even watched a single episode of Dragon Ball in their life. Or have only watched like one, sh one episode and there are like five. The Dragon Ball team has made sure to address the afterlife in the series due to the amount of characters who have passed away in battle. However, due to the popularity of these characters, they was they also made a point to ensure that they are never there for too long. They actually need a book of their own to keep track of all the rules of the afterlife, as many are often meant. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by meant, because I don't know about you, but I don't remember seeing anything about the rules of the afterlife bent. Is after meant of the sake of storylines. I know it's other world or the next dimension, depending on the child friendliness. It is a place where everyone goes after losing their lives. Yeah, because nobody could have ever found that out. Which sounds straightforward. The rules are unreliable. How are the rules unreliable? How are the rules unreliable? Like, explain to me, Screen Rant, in one of your videos, how exactly are these rules unreliable? 
because it's like kind of normal Bible or Christianity. If you did something good for your whole life, you go to the other world. If you do something bad for your whole life, you go to Dragon Ball's version of hell. So, I don't understand how it's unreliable. There seems to be a defined heaven and a hell, but there also was a few limbo area that people can reside before they are wished back by the Dragon Balls. I don't know why I'm using those quotation marks. However, these different areas seem to differ from different planets. Also, only some people can wish back, wish back. Not all. Yeah, I wonder why. Goku doesn't use all of his powers. Okay, let's see what I think There is no doubt that Goku is one of the most powerful characters in Dragon Ball, and perhaps all of anime. Can't really disagree with that. His abilities range from flying to regeneration in his god state. Yeah. Making him unstoppable to most of his enemies. Why, why did he not use all his powers in a fight? <sighs> okay then. I just hope that... I just really hope that Screamer knows what key suppression is. I just really do. Goku has faced a variety of enemies in his time. So he has been down and out in some fights. Since then, seems to have him utilize so many different abilities before, it is surprising when he does not use them. I'm starting to lose faith in Scream Man, Scream Net, if they hire these people who just literally do not know anything about anime in general. For example, his numerous fights with Vegeta and Frieza show telekinesis used against him. Goku has also shown that he has these powers as well, but has never used them in his fight for a benefit. The only time we've seen Goku use telekinesis is to read someone's mind, and he has to get all up close and personal with him, and put his hand on his head. You think Frieza or Vegeta will let him do that? No. And also, why would he even need to do that? He can see them about to do an attack and scream out whatever. Like, I don't actually see what you're trying to talk about. And what does Tolkien's stuff do with anything at all? Goku has also been shown to have these powers as well, but I'm using them well as a fight. With the laundry list of powers to choose from, perhaps Goku has forgotten what the answer is arsenal. Perhaps Screen Man doesn't know what plot and key suppression is. Twelve. The many different timelines have somehow been forgotten, and all of the people just forget this. Hey, excuse me, you want to know why they forget it? Because it's uncanon. If you just, if you somehow didn't figure that out before, please go get some help and stop what you're doing. You want to see a series? Introduce, introduce a time travel. There is a sign that they have jumped the shark. Well, Dragon Ball has used this plot device fairly effectively. It did use, it did have some fans confused. Like you, Scream Man, who just does not know what uncanny and canon means. With so many different distortions to time, dimensions, the Dragon Ball universe caused by a character's perishing, it has altered history. In addition, time machines have been introduced in the series at various points, causing different timelines to be maintained in the Dragon Ball separate universes. The most wonky timeline of all includes Trunks' and Future Trunks' timeline. With so many time travel tricks, Trunks has led two different lives at two different points in time. Both characters have incredibly diff are incredibly different due to the way they grow up. While the concept of time is interesting to hardcore fans, it does nothing but confuse casual viewers. I'm sorry about that. It does nothing but confuse casual viewers. No, it confuses you, Scream Rat. You know what you're doing. I'm not even a hardcore fan. I'm an actual regular Dragon Ball fan. And I know more than the entire company of Scream Rant on Dragon Ball. Oh my gosh. How did Goku flee Nimic? Did Scream Rant just... Did he just forget how Goku flee Nimic? 
I'm not, I didn't even have to read them. I'm not even going to read this. Cause they, they just, they literally just forgot. People did not forget spells for generation exist. He even told everyone, he literally told the viewers that he has the spells of Piccolo so he can regenerate. No one has forgotten this. And when Vegeta, I believe, did his big bang attack on one of Cell's arms, he easily regenerated it, no problem. So, if the viewers literally get to see it up close and first, and it's in the video game, for instance, with Cell X and everybody, even in the anime sometimes, well, more than one time, actually, even with semi-perfect Cell and imperfect Cell, it's not forgotten, so... Saiyans stop growing tails. Now, all I have to say about this is the reason why Toriyama removed the tails is because he does not want just giant apes growing all over the place. For he already had ideas from the Super Saiyan at that time. So, <laughs> I don't know if Screamer forgot it themselves, so they just kind of remembered it and put it on this list. Or, like, they just literally forgot what plot is and how transformations work. I, I don't know. I'm not even going to... It just... It's... Uh, let's just move on to number eight. Number eight, buying restoration for heroes. What do you mean? Well, that's not an important factor in Dragon Ball Series since... Or, well, since the seas front can be back by the dragon. Characters often get wounded. You just wonder why. Considering the overwhelming power of the Saiyans, there are some fairly devastating injuries that can occur in battle. Occur in battle. Why do most he heroes even need to worry about anyone getting hurt? You know, so they can fight each other once through again. So I don't have to really even read all that. Only to disappearance. You know what? I'm gonna keep screaming at this one because they're right. Excuse me. Much has only been. Without and Z, fairly only one time in the filler, I believe, the Cell Saga and the Boo Saga. And that was the last time we ever saw her. She was never mentioned in GT or Dragon Ball Super. So, I'll just give you this one, because, yeah. They're right. Yes, Ruby defies Dragon Ball's physical powers. That is not true. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, Ruby did not signify any powers. The only thing you me had did was cut off Vegeta's tail. You can see in the picture right here. Yajirobe did not do anything that the Fire Dragon Ball physical powers besides cutting, going up on Vegeta's tail and cutting his tail off. Rad's memory of Planet Vegeta's meteor shower. Memory recall can be difficult for some people, however, when it comes down to the show's continuity, it is important that show learners can maintain the fact from fan fiction. When describing the meteor shower while destroying Planet Vegeta, Raditz's memory seems to be a little fuzzy during different time periods. Yeah, sure. So, the Tommy people forgot that Raditz forgot how Planet Vegeta blew up. Well, yeah, in Dragon Ball Super, I believe, or Dragon Ball Minus, Raditz does know that Planet Vegeta got blew up by Planet Vegeta. So, yeah. And so does Vegeta, I'm sure. Before even the Doria told him. Well, hey, I'm just some Goku power on the internet that doesn't really know how power ceiling works, right? Right, or something, I don't know. For reasons, so should have been erased in GT. Okay, let's see what they talk about. What they have said about Dragon Ball's inability to follow the rules they have set up. Many rules are established, I don't know that. But then, unfortunately, forgotten. There was no rules in Dragon Ball GT. Besides, Dragon Ball GT wasn't that good of an anime. It's not, it's not as bad as people say it is, but it's not that good as the GT talk like say it is. Well, maybe I'm just acting offensive for no reason. Who knows? <coughs> Nobody has forgotten that Frieza and Cell appeared in Dragon Ball GT, so I don't know what you're talking about. Screen rant. Gohan can see into the future. <sighs> okay then. 
that has never, ever, ever been shown like, in the anime or manga or anything. At least from what I remember. Let me just see what they're talking about. So there's very little bit mentioned. Nothing about the being saved with Freecher. Yeah, so it's only Bardock thing. see in the dreams. Okay, then. That was your dream. And you want to also know something cool? That, um, that was filler. So, <laughs> stop. Why did we hear about King Cold earlier? For plot reasons. I don't have to explain this, do I? Do I, do I actually, like, actually, do I actually need to explain this? Wait, do I really need to explain this? No, I, I don't need to explain this. I do not need to explain any of this. Are the movies canon or not? I'm pretty sure, by now, every Dragon Ball fan, every single one, no matter if you're now getting into Dragon Ball, or you're the hardest of hardcore Dragon Ball fan, everyone knows that the movies are not canon, neither of the specials. So sorry, episode of Bardock, you are not in canon. Dragon Ball Minus is though, because it has connection with the Brolin movie, who's canon of Dragon Ball Super. Which is also canon. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you can stop now, screw that. What other problems do Dragon Ball fans overlook? About how you exist and how you're just trying to go a quick book about talking about Dragon Ball. Let us know in the comments, please know. So, uh, that was pretty quick. And that was really something that I, I don't like to say besides Thank you all for still sticking around. I told you I'd be back in like a week or so, and i talk to you all later. I eventually get my games back, or whatever. I didn't get up to the way, I just don't play anymore. And well, see ya. Probably wouldn't want to be ya.